Dr. Atkinson is feeling very positive and quite unstable, if truth be told. But if I add an alkyl group, such as the methyl group, he now becomes a little more stable and the positive charge has been somewhat diffused. Adding a second alkyl group, now making a secondary carbocation of Dr. Atkinson, he becomes again a little more stable and the positive charge is further diffused. And by turning him into a tertiary carbocation, he now becomes really quite stable indeed. And that positive charge has been further diffused. These alkyl groups have what's called a positive inductive effect on the positive charge. And that makes it more stable, more alkyl groups, more stability. So Markovnikov's rule states that a hydrogen will bond to the carbon with the most hydrogens already bonded to it. I think of it that hydrogen wants to, to be with its brothers. Let's look at the kind of classic example here, which is propene reacting with hydrogen bromide. So uh, there appears to be two possible products as the hydrogen bromide molecule breaks and goes across the carbon-carbon double bond. Maybe the bromine will end up in the middle, or maybe it will end up at the end. This being two bromopropane and this being a one bromo, and this being one bromopropane. But in fact, uh, this is the most likely product. And why is that? Because of Makovnikov's rule. The hydrogen wants to be with its brothers. The hydrogen preferentially wants to bond to the carbon that has the most hydrogens on it already. This hydrogen is bonded to a carbon with two other hydrogens, but this hydrogen in the one bromo is bonded to a carbon with only one other hydrogen. So this is the preferred product, and this product is a lot less likely. But you can't just leave it at that. You've got to, uh, you've got to dig down a little further into this for IB higher level. So the pi electrons here in the double bond are going to be bonding to this hydrogen on the hydrogen bromide. Now, uh, bromine has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, so that's going to be a little negative, that's a little positive, and so this is acting like an electrophile. This loves electrons in bonds, and, uh, well, I'm adding them on. So this is electrophilic addition. This bond here is going to break and undergo heterolytic fission. And I mustn't forget the bromide that's going to be made from that. Now let's look at these two carbocation intermediates. Once the hydrogen bromide is broken, one of these is much more likely to form. And so since the hydrogen wants to be with its friends, it's actually this one here on top that's more likely to form. Now why is that? Well, this is the more stable carbocation. And why is that? Because it's got two alkyl groups, like methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl. It has two alkyl groups attached to the carbon that's positive. So we show little arrows in the middle of the bond, not at the end, that would be like a dative covalent bond, but in the middle of the bond. And that shows the positive induction effect. That is, the stabilising influence of these alkyl groups pushing electrons in to kind of negate some of that positive charge there. Actually, it spreads it out. So this is stable. It's called a secondary carbocation because there are two alkyl groups pushing into that positive. Looking down to this one, there's only one alkyl group, which is the ethyl group. Now, that there's some positive inductive effect going on, but there is only one alkyl group stabilizing that positive. So this is ultimately less stable, one alkyl group, and this is more stable, two alkyl groups. Now, if this is the more stable of the two, then this is going to be preferentially formed. Then the second step of the mechanism is that the bromide ion is then going to react with this carbocation.
Now, why doesn't the bromide ion react with that carbocation? Well, that one is, isn't made. Well, there's a little bit of it, but there's hardly any of this made because it's the less stable one. The more stable one is made, the one with the lower energy. And so that ultimately gives us this 2-bromopropane. Hydrogen's with his buddies. So let's try a slightly trickier example. Uh, again, we have an asymmetrical alkene here, but this is an interhalogen. It's two or more different halogens uh, bonded together. Now, you can see that the chlorine has a slight negative charge and the iodine has a slight positive charge on this iodine monochloride molecule. Uh, that's because chlorine has a higher electronegativity than iodine. Uh, and you can just check that on the periodic table. This is closer to fluorine, and that's further away. So this must have the highest electronegativity. Remember before, it was HCl, and basically the same thing happens. This uh, pi bond here grabs onto the I+, plus, and those two electrons move onto the chlorine to make it chloride. Alrighty, so as the I plus is dragged over, it breaks the double bond here to make it a single bond, and you've got a choice. You can have the plus here and the I there, or the I there and the plus there. So one of these is the more stable configuration. Let's work out which one. Well, there's my positive charge, and I have two alkyl groups, this one and that one, pushing in electrons in order to stabilize it. But looking down here, you've noticed that there's three alkyl groups, this one, that one, and the one on top. So this would be a tertiary carbocation, and that's the most stable carbocation that you can have. So that means that this molecule is the one that's going to be preferentially created, as opposed to that one. This one's pretty stable too, but this one is the most stable. Three positive inductive charge effects as compared to two. So let's strike that out. Then we're going to have the electron moving over to there to make the final product. So just to recap the naming, butane, longest chain is four, and I'm going to try to do it alphabetically. Almost always the IB doesn't care, but sometimes they do. C, I, M. So you have to do it alphabetically, not by the numbers, but by the first letter of the branches. And we're done.